was not your new deck when I old decks, but I'm using it for the first time in a while. I would have recorded live, but since I've been playing kind of weird times in Portugal at the moment, so I wasn't really able to. It's all right though. Next next video will be first game against this drill bird spam deck, which I actually kind of like. I like his deck sort of thing. I will play, and it's not it's not the easiest matchup, but I'd expect to win at all times. Just just got to play that right. You can always use the firecracker to outrange stuff, and him having Xy NATO and Zappies over E always means like MK Bats is pretty effective. As you'll see here, for example, right, we're forcing out the NATO straight away, plus the cannon car giving us like a three. Two and a half licks advantage, which is nice. Although they kind of got in that position, it's a bit awkward. Because if we play wall breakers, it's probably going to get hit. So it can't really capitalize yet. Have to wait a little bit till we're at 10, where we can split them. And yeah, force out the zappies, which is what I was expecting. Go for a nice high fire crack. As you can see, right? He's got nothing, just outranges. Nothing you can do about it. And we actually go for the Prince plus Minor here since he has a bad hand to defend it. I have to go for Golden Knight. Gets its King Tower. Also has to use a Bar Barrel though. And we get decent minor damage, about 500. Plus a slight looks advantage, which is nice. And since he's always going to get that King Tower anyway with the Firecracker, plus he has a NATO. So it didn't really matter that he got it at this point in time. And yeah, some nice wall breakers, force up cannon cart. And go for high bats. We know he's gonna NATO. But two for three, making positive trades. Set up an MK push. We know that we have Firecrack in hand and he doesn't have NATO, so we can always do the outranging. See what he wants to go for. Yeah, there you go. Look at the value. And we actually get a great prince in there. We go for a zap as well to make sure the firecracker stays alive. That was beautiful. That was delightful. And we're going to get maybe some more splash damage. Yeah, a little bit. Or we the lane because we didn't have the greatest hand. But now I can empty the back. Plus we made a plus one trade on the wall breakers. He also has no NATO in hand so we can use bats quite freely. We predict he's going to XE for the bats. So we go for low bats. We go for the high prints. We go for the firecracker opposite lane in this beautiful placement. And that's actually an excellent defense. He has no elixir, he has no barbar, he has no ghost, he has no golden knight to defend this. Everything in the bridge, he has no method of defending. And that was a really nice predict of his predict to take the game. If we were playing it slow, we would have won anyways, so I don't think it really mattered. But nice to be playing at a very, very good level. So next game against good old Morton. Lovely, lovely Morton. Um, not the easiest matchup. I think with archers plus goblins, it's a bit more challenging. Because Zap, we can't actually kill either of them. It's okay though. This mine, I don't think was great. Especially into a prince. If if I was less good, I would have gone MK there, and probably won to be honest. But instead. You're just playing it a little bit slow, we go for minor bats. Archers are dead, so that's fine, we've got the elixir advantage. And now we can quite freely MK. So let's see. We do go for MK, plus the gob gang, since there'll be some goblins on the MK side to support. Some spear goblins. And then we also go for some wall breakers, I hope. Oh, never mind. But archers are so broken they killed the MK before we could even get to King Tower. So I was actually quite lucky. Because this is where we can use the firecracker at some point when we're going to get a lot of value. Maybe he takes King Tower, maybe not. But either way, if he doesn't have it up early, it's always good. So because with goblins, I think the Zap was the right play. Because if I had played bats, by the time they spawned, it would have taken a few hits. And that miner in the front. Really, really nice placement. I knew you wouldn't expect it, so a lot of hits there. And yeah, didn't have long in hand, so we could have gone for Gob Gang Bats instead. And this, this, excellent play. 
when using the bats and tank for the wall breakers right as you can see forcing out the four so many times that I works against mortal players a lot of different nugs when they've got a log in hand they try to defend the wall breakers but the bats are tanking it gets one hit maybe two so that's like a nice a nice sneaky little play that you want you wouldn't think to do but it's quite quite effective and we did have to take that since we probably couldn't have defended it but i think we're fine it looks advantage plus we got firecracker hit and yeah having about 2000 hp going into dublin this matchup is enough and we're we're looking at around that number so it should be fine we go for the bats we can go for a minor we get a nice firecracker outside of the poison range we also zap because we're just trying to kill the archers with the chip we get a beautiful mk jump he still hasn't got king tower and you know he doesn't have log so he can go for gobgang you'll see all these offenses we create them in a way forcing him to use a defensive log so then when he goes for wall breakers or mine every time he has nothing for the gobgang and so let's see we actually go for mk opposite a bridge firecrack in the middle and we're getting look one firecracker hit two two chip hits which is actually a lot of damage plus a printer and the same thing he has no log because he used it on defense so he can just go for a goblin it's it's smart three spear golden hits and we're just playing the prince always in our low hp lane we do have a decent hp advantage at this point and so we can go for an mk prince since we'll take out the archers these central firecrackers they're basically always getting value right because like look he has to use his minor he actually didn't but it just made it easier for himself to defend so it's fair enough if you play them in the middle when they're playing stuff in front of their bomb tower it's just going to get obliterated and then you have firecrack on the field always getting value so it's it's a nice play to do and there no goblins right so we could actually go for an mk here which we do and this is really really smart we leave the minor because we know it won't do enough damage and after spending all money, he's going to struggle to defend what we play. Which happens to be the case. We got the wall breaker connection, we can just throw some zap. So, I mean, either way, we're going to take the left tower. And then we had way more licks there anyway to take the right tower as well. So it didn't really matter. We got nice plays. Um, Actually, I really like this deck. I think it's pretty good for an MK deck at the moment, since MK is quite weak. But it's fun to play, and a lot of outplay potential with the Firecracker. Also, Firecracker, if you get like the good connection, one-shotting archers is nice. And forcing out arrows, and you've got like the bait elements from original MK bait with the bats, the goblin. So, gives you opportunity to play very well. And like this, look at the Firecracker. We're getting so much value. And we're also forcing out doesn't actually play anything for it because i've played this guy a lot of times when i've been playing the mk bait deck i did a video a few videos ago recently and he's just lost in singles so i think he's trying to play a bit more passive which is fair but he could have taken king tower if he wanted to he just had to play a nice spirit but he knows our bats so that's also the thing when they have ice spirit it tends to be a much better matchup because Mm, it gives them the reset if I'm playing Inferno in one of my MK bait decks, but it doesn't normally hit all the bats unless they time it well, which tends to get a lot of damage. And when they have to use it on defense, then I'm nothing for bats. I like, I like that. So we do this because we know he's going to ice burn and I'm forcing out the archers. Got the minor hits, we can go for Prince, one hit on the hog. So the good timing there. Um, we could go for defensive wall breakers, we could zap these archers, we could firecracker. But we were smarter, we leave them, because we see we've got 3k HP on the right. So it's actually just going to be even damage. Well, not even, not even, even, but it's still our strong side, the left, after those archers. And nice, he has no logs, so we can go for the wall breakers. We can also go for the god gang, force out a monk, that was exceptional. Because you would have had to play like a bomb tower or defensive earthquake if you had it in hand. Would have been the play, but eh, whatever. And so we know he's going to go for the archer's predict, but we get the prince down, so that's fine. And we're just looking for some minor chip again, the central firecracker. 
He's having to spend a lot on defense. Also, the splash hits hitting the bomb tower. We might get an MK jump if we're lucky. No, we do get a firecracker shot. Bring us back into the damage lead. He's going to go for high archers. I just, yeah. I knew he would. And then, I don't know, that ice spirit seemed really dumb. It's just a complete waste of one elixir. It doesn't actually do anything. And I like the gob going on the left. I think keeping the Prince HP so he didn't take too much damage was smart. We can go for minor wall breakers since he spent a lot on the MK, getting a lot of minor hits. He doesn't want to have to spend his archers to defend it or anything. And now he's used his ice spirit, terrible archers, and we have MK in hand. He also has not a single card that can hit our bats. So we go with the bats. We go with the minor on the left since we're just still trying to get that damage. He uses ice spirit, we still have bats down. And then we know he's going to log, so we go for Gob Gang on the right, but both wall breakers connect anyways, so a nice win. Playing very well, actually. Past few. Much years have been. I've only been playing a few ladder games a day since I've been busy. But they've been good. And let's see, this was. I think this was this morning. I don't really remember. But very, very hard matchup, actually. Pumbo. You don't see it very often. But, yeah, this was, like, playing it pretty much perfectly. So, we get the firecracker, plus the shot. It comes first play because he's such a skilled player like myself. And this is the perfect way to punish, punish the pump with his hand, right? You go for the minor in the front. He actually does block it with a mini packer. We get a load of bats damage. We get prince shots. And he has to reset the prince rather than the bats. And um, we can kite with the wall breakers. That was actually the perfect timing. I think that was pretty much the latest time I could have done. And we get a wall breaker connection. So that was, considering the defenses he had in hand for my deck, probably the perfect, the perfect punish. Sure, the miner could have hit the elixir collective, but that's just luck involved. And so we go down, we know he we know has log, but we want that out of hand because our offenses are kind of awkward. And we MK here because we know if he expos on the right, we're just going to firecracker, get the firecracker chip on tower, that's more than enough. We let it connect, we go for a firecracker because that's going to hit expo, maybe the queen as well. We actually protect it with the bats because that way it kind of messes up his spirits. And that expo couldn't damage lead, so we're fine. Um, yeah. We go for the wall breakers kite, bring the mini packer back up, force our defense on the right. He pumps up. So same thing, when he doesn't have the mini pack in hand, we can always go for these princes at bridge because he's having to spend like three spirits plus a log. And then he actually defends his pump with the mini packer and he also has to use a log. So we can go for the gold gang, good placement, that way the fire spirit only hits the like stab goblins, whatever they're called. Um, and he pumps up again, takes a few hits. We can go for bats because we have quite an awkward cycle. Also, the high wall breaker is in front, so he can't east spirit both. Yeah, this way of forcing out the east spirit on the wall breakers. And he yeah, exposed it, I think, a bit of a weird time, so we get three minor hits. And the half dead queen. But we expect him to expo, so we're pretty prepared with the MK low. We take the queen damage since, actually the queen did a lot of damage, but he's gonna be about even damage after this offense. On both sides, it didn't really matter. He also uses his, his e spirit, and now we could go for an offense. Prince wall breakers, maybe we go for just wall breakers. We'll start the log. And then, yeah, ideally we're basically trying to win in this push or get a good amount of damage. We go um, Gob Gang opposite lane, which I really like. I think that was smart. We get a nice zap, so it's reducing that mini pecker hit. And this way we get a jump that happens to be on tower. And the firecracker shot on the expo. We can go for low prints opposite lane, because then we can also MK on the right. Those really, really horrible spirits from him. And that's got obliterated. And so at this point, we're just trying to get minor damage. Because we know a few, more minor, a few more minors he's done. 
We can go for a zap if we need, but that ends up connecting. And a really, really nice win. And hard matchup. He didn't play so well. He just kept trying to pump rather than punish. And when he punished, we defended well. So fair play. And then the final game against this Sparky player. Yeah, this did not start off well. We got we got scammed. We got shortchanged at the foreign exchange office. I mean, you'll, you'll see. It's Sparky first play because he's you know the full skill, full skill straight from Japan. And then we get instantly scammed, but. We just played so much better than him that it doesn't even matter, to be honest. This is what skill gap looks like. You want to see. So look at this, look at this. This boy is at the bridge and it hits my tower. I don't even know how that's possible. It's like on the bridge and it hits my tower. So it's a bit ridiculous, but a horrible gob giant from him. And then obviously he just goes every card he has at bridge. Goes with his lightning as well. Uh, I played this guy in, in one of the other videos twice, I think. So I, I know the I know the deck and I know the skill level. Neither of which are very flattering. Yeah, great dark prince, you're you're really good. So we go for bats, we know it's gonna snowball. We've got the wall breakers ready. Actually I like the splitting wall breakers because this sort of matchup you can pressure opposite lane if you have a perfect cycle. Or if you know the hand. And so having that dual lane damage is perfectly fine. Um, I forced out the bar barrel because I know this way I can print a bridge. He has to like Hunter or Gob Giant. And those are his only options. So excellent Prince of Bridge with forcing out Gob Giant. And yeah, that's why you kind of have to know the perfect hand. Every card in their hand at all times. And we get good bats damage. He also has to use the defense of Phoenix, and we get that 420 or something, approximately how much Firecracker does. And so once again, we're well prepared for the Dark Prince. We go for the Wall Breaks the opposite, because we know he still has to defend it. He has the Hunter, and now he has absolutely nothing in hand for Prince of Bridge. We predict he's going to Bar Brow, well, we know he's going to Bar Brow, so then we can go up the Bridge. We can also go for Firecracker. He misses the snowball. And now we can go for an MK bridge. We're up a massive amount of elixir. And we can also go for bats. He should have gone for a Phoenix very high, which he does, but a bit late. And he also messes up the Dark Prince timing. He also messes up the Bar Barrel. So everything's on tower. It's all gone wrong for him. We protect the Firecracker. He goes for a Gob Giant into every card in my deck. We have two firecrackers, we've, we've crippled him. We've left him for dead, he is finished. Finished player, go home, goodbye. And uh, we're destroying that matchup. And so I think we we're probably top 10 yesterday, but I'll see what we are now. I actually really like this deck, so I would, I would recommend it. We are currently. Eight.